Welcome to another Tech View vlog and in this vlog I want to compare Tizen OS against Safish OS. I have a Samsung Z or Z1 here with Tizen OS 2.4 and I have a Safish OS device, the YOLO 1 device with Safish OS 2.05 and I want to compare them in terms not of speed like I did in the past but more likely the overall user experience the notifications, quick toggles, um, the settings, accounts and the overall multitasking and user experience that you will get on those two devices and the differences between those two operating systems because both of them are based on Linux, both of them are more or closer to uh, GNU slash Linux distribution that you can install on your PC uh, so they are not basically Android which just uses the Linux kernel and that makes them very interesting for some users and I want to compare those two. First of all let's try to start or unlock the Tizen device. You can do so by pressing the power button here on the right but it's I think more convenient to press the home button to show you the lock screen. You can swipe here to unlock the device and now you are on your home screen. Uh, the same thing that you can do here on the Safish device is just simply pressing the power button but what's more easy is easier is to double tap simply to uh, and then unlock the device very very easy and you can see this is the user interface there uh, the wallpaper of course on both devices is, is set custom here you can lock the device by swapping down and then hit the lock button or you can press also the power button to lock the device as well. Uh, now what about the notification system? Uh, the Tizen OS overall user experience tries to resemble the Samsung Touch with Android user experience so it's very close to Android. Uh, I would even call it an Android clone I think. What you can do here is just simply swipe from uh, the up to down from the top to bottom and you will get the uh, quick toggles and the notification area. Usually there are some notifications just like updates or someone wrote you on WhatsApp or something like this. And uh, so basic notifications in here and the quick toggles. Uh, quick toggles work as usual. You can just like so for example here click on Wi-Fi to disable Wi-Fi. Uh, or you can hit the edit button if you want to rearrange or add new settings in here which is also very convenient feature and of course you have more than those you can see I can scroll through the various different uh, toggles that I can uh, set in here and uh, yeah very useful very handy if I want to go to settings of my system I press on the gear icon press on the gear icon which brings me to my settings uh, now let's take a look at the Safish device because it has a little bit it's a little bit different because if you swipe from uh, above you can see that you have an ambience uh, changer in here which is basically your profile changer and you can lock your device. If you want to go to your notifications uh, however you have to swipe on the desktop from left to right and it will bring you the notification overview with uh, very, uh, very different um, options that you can set here just like for example there's a weather application uh, showing you my weather currently my date and if I have some appointments or something like this in my calendar it will just simply also show them here you can see my notifications um, categorized in various different notifications um, of the application itself so my Twitter um, notifications in here uh, my Harbor Tweetian which is also a Twitter client funny uh, but uh, this is another app uh, showing me uh, notifications and I have a Twitter feed in here which is basically a Twitter feed um, viewer so it shows you the last 10 tweets of your uh, Twitter feed and you can scroll through if you click on one of them it will just simply bring you to the Twitter page in the web browser so it's not a fully Twitter client it's just a Twitter feed viewer. The same goes for Facebook if you have a Facebook account uh, set up here it will also uh, show it, it shows you then the 10 last uh, Facebook uh, messages or Facebook uh, entries uh, that you have subscribed to. Uh, what you can do here to go to the trick quick toggles is swipe 
from up to down. As you can see here, not, not, not this swipe because this will lock the or change the profile, but simply here, swipe down and you will get uh, quick toggles in here, airplane mode, uh, wireless LAN, I think this here is uh, disabled because I don't have a SIM in here, uh, mobile data and so on, and uh, GPS, I think, no, Bluetooth in this case. Uh, you see I have the option to change my volume here, my overall system volume, but I have also some quick actions, just like for example, take a selfie, create a new node, or open up the map application and simply start up the location service and uh, just simply find out where I am, basically. Uh, you can edit those entries by just, or rearrange those entries just by pressing and holding. And you can see you have the little X here to remove them, or you can rearrange them just like you want to. If I want to remove the volume control, I can press the X and it's gone, press somewhere else and I'm out of the edit mode. Pretty nice. If I want to customize some more, I can click in here on the gear icon, which will bring me directly into settings, where I have the option to change my quick toggles. As you can see here, I have various different quick toggles. I can also go in here and basically for every setting that I have in my settings, uh, I can add a quick toggle if I want to. So uh, this is pretty, pretty neat, pretty, pretty nice and pretty good. Of course, I can also edit the quick actions in here. As you can see here, I've all them, all of them ticked. But if I don't like the um, the search on the internet uh, toggle, I can disable it. And if I go back to my quick uh, actions, as you can see here, it's gone now. Yeah, this is basically this. Let's go back. What you can do here is as well turn on or off the weather information and the calendar information if you don't like it. And yeah, to go to your settings, basically what you can here uh, do is just simply swipe back and you are into the global settings of the device itself. So pretty easy, I think. Of course, also if you want to go to settings, what you can do is simply uh, swipe from the bottom up, very similar to the um, uh, Tizen uh, solution, which will bring up the app drawer. But the neat little thing is that if you are in an application, you can swipe from the bottom up uh, and you will get the app drawer to switch between applications or start a new application, which is pretty nice. In this case, um, settings is already opened, uh, but this is one way also to access settings. There is an icon in the app drawer itself. So now let's close this, now let's uh, lock this and go into the Tizen device. We want to take a look at the accounts which are available here on their accounts. And as you can see, there are several different accounts that I have already created. A Samsung account which is necessary for uh, downloading stuff from the Tizen store and I think also for updates. A Dropbox account if you want to upload or download from your Dropbox, uh, sync um, photos and videos. A Google account for email, for calendar, for contacts. And of course you have the option to add a new account, email account, IMAP pop free, Facebook, uh, Google again and Microsoft Exchange. There's no way to add a uh, CardDAV or CalDAV account in here, own cloud or something like this won't work in here, um, at least not with the options you get here, which is uh, pretty, pretty bad, I would say, because yeah, you can perhaps manage to get things done with the Microsoft Exchange ActiveSync support somehow, uh, creating a bridge or something like this, but uh, not very friendly when it comes to accounts. Uh, also, there's no uh, chat bot or chat integration into uh, this, so you can't chat with XMPP or something like this in here. In contrast, on the Safish S device, if I, let me just go to the settings, um, if I go in here and, oops, if I go in here and scroll down to my accounts, you see I have several different accounts in here. I have various different CalDAV and CARDAV accounts set up in here. I have various different email accounts set up. Google again. I have a Yola account. The Yola account is um, necessary for downloading stuff from the Yola store. So getting applications basically and updates as well. 
I have Twitter set up because the Twitter feed that I showed you in the notification area is basically uh, using this. I have XMPP accounts, so I have a chat integrated in here. And then of course I can add new accounts and you can see I have Facebook, Frooks, Google, Mimoto, Twitter, VK, XMPP and Yahoo. So several more. I have even uh, more when it comes to cloud um, uh, services, just like not only Dropbox, but also OneDrive, for example. And I have uh, CalDAV and CalDAV support and email uh, with the support for IMAP and um, POP3. If you're missing an Exchange account, there is an option to download an Exchange support from the Yola store. It's not installed by default. But you can get Microsoft Exchange support from the Yola store and then it will also list a um, Microsoft Exchange ActiveSync support in here. Uh, so this is basically the account set up in here for the SafeHS devices. You can see here, out of the box, it supports more accounts and uh, is pretty flexible when it comes to CalDAV and CalDAV support. So I can just simply use Nextcloud or OnCloud and uh, use CalDAV and CalDAV to sync my contacts and calendar entries, which I do, by the way. And of course, there is um, Dropbox and OneDrive support for syncing uh, photos and videos that you can upload or uh, download later on, which is also a pretty nice feature. I wish that they uh, will add uh, OnCloud or Nextcloud in here as well or some other uh, more user or privacy friendly uh, friendly services. So this is basically the account setup. Now let's go to multitasking. Uh, first of all on the Tizen device, uh, let's unlock the device. Uh, unlock the device. I can go to my home screen by pressing the home button, which is pretty similar to Android as well. I can op open up new application as so, uh, I uh, Told you about the app draw. I uh, open up uh, applications. So, for example, Angry Bird here. It's by the way an, uh, out of date. So let's go back. Open something else. Calculator, for example. And I can go back to the home screen here. I can switch between different applications by pressing the home button, which will give me a multitasking view of all running applications. Uh, calculator settings and Angry Birds that are not really running applications most of the time. It's uh, just using the Android way of showing the last apps that I opened up basically. I have the option to close all, which forcefully close all, but not all of those in this list um, need to be running. In contrast to the SafeRes approach, which has a nice little overview as you can see here, of running applications uh, in this little tile. If I open up another application, the calculator for example, you can see that I have now here, if I calculate something, on the overview you can see, see my last calculations. If I open up a video player for example, I have the option to just simply, let's go to history, stay back this one here. I have the option to see the video playing. Uh, this is now a music video, so not very interesting, I think. This is perhaps a little bit better. Ah, not supported. <laughs> we find a video that plays. With animation, see, you can see, I can see now the video playing here on this little tile, which is pretty nice. You can interact with this by pressing the pause button, play button. If I want to, a very nice uh, option of multitasking as well, and you can see the different multitasking tiles. And most of the time, those are really running tiles, as you can see here. This one is running app. It's a running app, but also it uses um, some dimmed um, tiles if an application was closed because they were, it was uh, using too much memory, so it's not. Um, uh, interfering with your interactions of the operating system itself. So it's a clever multitasking. This multitasking approach is very, very interesting, very, very clever. In terms of video player, there is of course a nice little option. If I open up the video player in here, play a little video clip in here, there is a way to pop up the video and then have it as overlay 
running. So it's similar to the multitasking approach I showed you on the Selfish OS. So if you go to my home directory, you can see the video is still in here. I can press on it, playback. Very nice. Uh, choose the size as well of the overlay. It's a little bit, as you can see here, a little bit tricky to really configure this and really use it. Um, yeah, it's, it looks like a hack and I think this is the only application that supports uh, this overflowing uh, stuff, so the video player. Um, yeah, pretty nice, but not very useful in terms of um, multitasking. Yeah, it's a limited multitasking. Of course, this device only supports 768 megabytes of RAM, so it's not meant for multitasking. Basically, uh, the one gigabyte uh, perhaps not also meant for multitasking so much with the Yola One device. Uh, but uh, it's a little bit cumbersome, I think. It's not so fluid this multitasking uh, I would say when it comes to a uh, comparison so this was a quick comparison I think 15 minutes 60 minutes something like this a quick comparison between the Tizen one device and the Yola uh, device and uh, yeah I hope I could give you a quick overview of those both um, operating systems on those devices and you can uh, then uh, see of course the the uh, selfish OS device has a unique way of of interacting um, with the swipes uh, instead of a home button to to go back to your but it's very in, in, intuitive if you have if you have used it for one or two weeks it becomes second nature and is very very quick to navigate and you don't miss the Android navigation buttons just like on the Tizen device that we have the back button or something like this you just simply learn if you want to go back you swipe back and it's it's a ple pleasure to use uh, after a while but of course this is all a subjective my subjective view on those things so if you like Android more like the Android button philosophy more pressing buttons of course on the new Android devices they are cap capacitive buttons as well and by the way those those two are as well or on-screen buttons uh, but um, yeah this is I think a quick little guide a quick comparison between Tizen and Selfish OS uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed this little uh, demonstration and thanks for watching until the next time